Right, everyone, we're going to talk today about who can or who cannot translate medieval documents, ninja documents, sword documentation, martial arts documentation. OK, so we're going to go through that. But before we start, if, did you know that my book of Bushido is literally yesterday out on Audible? So if you want to get it, if you've got Audible account, guys, get it. It's one credit book of Bushido out literally just now. Go and get yourself a copy of that. Perfect. So please do support me. Right. Who can and who cannot translate sword documentation, ninja documentation, all that sort of stuff. Now, if you don't know, uh, there's a guy called Nate the Aussie who's on YouTube. And he's put up a couple of videos um, pretty much negatively saying, Anthony, what you do is wrong, etc, etc. So um, I messaged him and said, Nate, you know, what's going on? It seems like a lot of sort of negativity seems a bit you know it's polite but it's too much what, what's going on so we had a chat and it was very nice and uh i sort of spoke to him i said listen we've got to all come together in this community and we've got to make sure we all do you know the right thing so we've had a couple of emails backwards and forwards and the idea is we're going to try and come out and find the best solution for historical samurai research where do we get how do we all get to the right position for historical samurai research there's no problem with everyone disagreeing but there's very suspicious when people disagree 100% um, on there's only a few things you can disagree 100% on so for example is the Bujinkan representative of ninja hand -hand combat no it's not I 100% disagree does the Bujinkan have historical martial arts in it? Yes, it does. I agree. Yes, they do. They do. Is that martial arts effective? Partly so, some of it, you know. So I never, there's no 100% disagreement. But it did seem that it was coming that. But I did speak to him. He says, no, Anthony, I was just, he said, I should have put some of the positive bits in as well. And we came to a list of agreements of what we agree on, what we don't agree on. But one of the things we don't agree on, we don't agree on, is you. he believes that you need co Ryu practitioners to translate scrolls okay you cannot have a swordsmanship manual translated by someone who is not from a I, now i'm not clear on his point here is a from that specific school so muhyoshi ryu needs a muhyoshi ryu teacher a yagyu shinkagiru needs a yagyu shinkagiru teacher or if he's saying you know um somebody in ko ryu in that world can you know translate most ko ryu scrolls because they use the same terminology so i've come up with four things that um basically four things that you need to be able to translate these scrolls correctly okay and i'm going to hopefully i want you guys to give us your opinion let me know on what I, i'm going to give you a, my idea which is you don't need to be co you to translate this stuff you don't so first of all number one is language you need to have the language ability Yep, somebody needs to be able to speak and read it. And good. Not just like, oh, I can sort of get that. Like, I can get my head around Middle English, later Middle English. But, ah, you know what I mean? You're like, is that F and S? Is that F? You know, is that V and F? The F is a V. You know, so, so for example, it's weird. Right? If I say in English, it's weird. And you're like, mm, so when you translate that, oh, okay, in Japanese, oh, it's strange you know in the japanese imagine being japanese oh it's strange but actually in older english weird uh it means fate so it could be oh it wasn't strange it was fate so weird and fate but in, you know what back in the day was was one of the things and it changed into weird meaning strange so you need to have that knowledge you never have a language skill of that level where you can say okay this is the time period they're talking in and we know that word means this in this time, etc. Now, the next thing you got to have, number two, is jargon. You need the jargon. If you don't have the jargon, you can get lost. So everybody was looking at the Thomas Cleary. Was it Cleary or was it William Scott Wilson? I think it was William Scott Wilson in the Life-Giving Sword. And my translators, so we've got this um, Metzke, basically. And Metzke means the place that you look at, you know, or cut to the place you look at. And... So, in, in, in the other text, well, I'll go on to that bit in a bit, but basically this Metsuke means wherever you're looking, you cut. And where you look in Yagyu Shinkagyu is the hands. So it means cut the hands or, you know, cut the point that you're looking at. But um, the translator of the other one didn't know this jargon and it simply was like cut off your vision, cut off your, so it was in look away. You know, it was actually just literally translated. So they clearly didn't know the jargon. The next one is context. You've got to put it in the context. So you've got to have a broad knowledge of that area. So what's going on? 
does that really happen? Like when we talk about Iaido and I'm like, you know, I don't see how Iaido, kneeling down, we can do kneeling down Iaido when most of the actual, you don't sit with a sword like that. You just don't sit like that. But that's still an open debate. And I've been doing that with Frederick, who um, we've been talking to Frederick about it. And Frederick um, Kynes, I think it is, he basically uh, is the man who is the historical advisor for the Shogun. And I've been saying we've been finding references for that with him. And the next one is unbiased. You must be an unbiased observer. You must have an unbiased goal. So my goal is to just find what did the samurai do every day doesn't matter what they did i don't have i don't need them to i don't need to say they definitely did this now that's a bit of a problem for koryu people because they are not unbiased it's very rare to get it so let me put it this way we don't have any ancient greeks left okay so this is where i don't agree wholeheartedly with nate we don't have any ancient greeks left but we translate ancient greeks and they're very popular books and we've got all the Greek philosophers there and academics who know the language, they know the jargon, they understand the context and they're not biased, will translate the Greek classics. There you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, it's not, they'll do it. Now, the next example is religion. So who's allowed to translate the Bible, the Quran, the Torah? Who can translate them? Oh, well, it's only a Muslim can translate um, the Quran. Only a Christian can translate the Bible. no. No, we have plenty of scholars who do it and not them because they are unbiased, okay? Because the problem with bias is that once you think it's summer already, before you have translated it, you automatically translate it that way. So this is where it comes in. This is my big problem with Koryu. So Koryu, let's go through the list, yeah? Koryu tend to not be good enough on language. Now you're going to think, what, Anthony, but... You don't understand what it's like. Medieval Japanese, Japanese, the medieval Japanese is different to modern Japanese. It's not ridiculously different, but it's one of them where I have spoke to hundreds, hundreds of Japanese people on this matter and said, can you read that? What do you think? Of it? It's like us reading, you know, a bit like reading Chaucer. You get what's going on, but you couldn't give you the finer points. So most Koryu practitioners do not have the language. They just don't have the language ability. You need someone who's in that world doing it. I'm not saying all of them, some of them. So every person who does Koryu, you need to say, how good's your medieval Japanese for a start? Second one is jargon. Now, this is where Koryu do... This is why you can't 100% disagree on things, because this is where Koryu make it. Usually, in Koryu, the jargon is still within the school, and they know it, and they understand it, and it's been passed down because that's their jargon. So you're like, okay... Metsuke, yep, that's that. This is this. Like, we've got one at the minute in Mukyoshiru we're struggling, which is um, this hitting in a triangle. And, like, for example, there's one where it says grab the stomach and then grab the mountain. We're assuming, we have to assume the mountain is the nose because the jargon has been lost. Unless there's a reference somewhere else in Mukyoshiru, mountain, it's a guess. Grab stomach, grab mountain, and you're pulling over, yeah? And then there's the three places to hit, the water, the mountain, which is probably the groin bladder area. So unless you find this in there, you're guessing. So Koryu have the upper hand in jargon. But if the jargon is written down in the scrolls, and it says, Metsuke means this, you're okay, you've got the jargon. Context, Koryu people, again, this will depend on the individual. Maybe they've got the context. Maybe, they, you know, just because they go to a dojo and tie their... Hakama three times a week and look samurai doesn't mean they understand the world of the samurai you've really got to, it takes a lot of research to understand the world of the samurai and are they unbiased no they are not unbiased so this is the problem you've got once you start seeing like let's take Yagyu Shinkagaru they're like they've got their own kata it's been passed on for 400 years the names match the tra the scrolls but the skills do not let's take Tengu Sho for example Shumpukan okay have Tengu Show in it, and the names are the same. I think the names are the same, but they have Tengu Show, the, the, the document, and it's totally different, 100% different. It's not even like, oh, it's changed. They have swapped it out for something else, and I think it's known that it's been swapped out, and there's two lines. One does the line from the Matsudaira, you know, uh, transcription, and the other one does a different thing altogether. So when you say to them, please translate Tengu Show, they're going to bend it to their will. It would only be... I'm not saying they wouldn't be unbiased, but most likely, you know, and I know Japanese Koryu people. So what ha what actually happens in Japan is they... So let me just put this right. Why do you think you don't 
often get translations of sword scrolls from the school. Why is it that Yagyu Shinkagiryu have not put out a translation of the Eimokuroku? Why? They do the school, they've got the book. You can buy the the Japanese, and you can buy the, the original Japanese of the Eimokuroku, no problem. But why have they not put out a translation and a demonstration? It's because it's different to them. So some of them, like Shumpukan, have books on Yagyu Shinkagiru, and they do have some of the scrolls in there, but they never say, this is what the, Matsu, the famous Matsudaira one says, and this is what we do, and they're different because of X. That doesn't happen very often, or you don't really see that. And why is it not done in English? The simple reason is, is they don't match, and I know Japanese people, and Japanese people like to just go on with their lives without any fuss, and then pass it on to the next person. And their master said this, so it's okay. The scroll says something different. They know it's different. Everyone knows it's different, but nobody mentions it. But the world is changing now. Japan is changing. It's changing quite a lot. And Japan, they now know, you know, they're now sort of like getting out there a bit. So when I come along, we've got the language. Yoshie, no problem. Miyako, no problem. They've been dealing with scrolls for over 15 years now, well and truly. And Yoshie has... a degree in translation and works as a professional translator in a daytime job for a big company so um oh well for an you know an exec what's the word i'm looking for um exclusive company that do high-end products so she has to make sure the english is spot on for high-end product buying that products that cost about three or four five thousand pounds each so she does it as in her university days she does it as a job she's had 10 15 years going through the old medieval manuals. She's done the social courses in order to make sure her social is up there with all the correct dictionaries. She has an excellent context, understanding of the context. Mirko, and I've got my third translator who is rena remaining anonymous and she has um, also Koryu abilities and, you know, native Japanese thingy and all that sort of stuff and access to people and friends around in that community. So, Language is no problem. Jargon, we can struggle with, but normally we find the jargon in the scrolls or we say, this is unknown, we don't know. This is a guess. Or there's, this is not a guess, this is what they do. Then there's context. We're well aware of the context now. We've done so much research that um, the context is starting to um, fit into place. And I had a wonderful compliment. I had a wonderful compliment from Frederick, who I've been doing the reviews on. And I genuinely was, you know, when you feel heartfelt for a compliment, and I because... He said, oh, Anthony, I think you've got this wrong on the um, the flags. And I said, you know, on the war curtains, I said, I tell you what, just tell me everything I've got wrong and I will do a video about it because I don't mind being wrong. And he said, nope. He says, I find your comments really insightful and you've totally got what you And yes, you're correct, 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 correct. Just one thing I wasn't correct on. And it turns out I'd remembered my own work the opposite. Screens and curtains I'd mixed them, curtains and screens. I was like, oh, it's the opposite way around. So it's my own fault for not knowing. I still knew it. I just wrist remembered it and of course we are not biased in any way shape or form i don't care what yagyu did or what you know i want to know what i don't care what yagyu do now i want to know what yagyu did then so to me to answer nate so nate has put out and said anthony i just don't agree you've got to be a koryu person to do it and i say no because then you'd never get a translation of greek classics you'd never get non-religious translations of the bible you can buy academic translations of the bible did you know that in some academic translations of the bible which i found this out from metatron their god is not singular nor male i think i think it's plural the gods have done this and did you know interesting fact that because you guys know i'm into fantasy and all i love a bit of fantasy that um it says in the beginning there was darkness and darkness was on the face of the deep and all that Turns out the word darkness is actually Tiamat. Tiamat in the original thing. And the pre-Christian, uh, sorry, the pre-Jewish traditions of the darkness of Tiamat, which, by the way, Tiamat, guys, is like the famous Dungeons and Dragons dragon, but the body of Tiamat was ripped up and darkness. Basically, it's a lot more, the Bible is not as translated well as you think because it was translated by religious people. So the St. King James Bible becomes a bit, problematic so you can actually buy academic translations where it doesn't say god it says the gods did this and tiamat was broken apart and from that became you know what i mean it was like it's now very cleaned up to in the beginning there was darkness and god said there'd be light and actually it's like the gods and tiamat and all this and you're like bloody hell that's not fair. that's the difference in 
unbiased translation. You don't have to try to say, oh, this one male God did this. And, you know, so it's a very difficult thing. So my, my, my point to Nate is I would say, um, welcome to the discussion, Nate. Get involved. But we all have to be unbiased. And the simple fact is, is they're my four things I think you need for a translation. And I have put them four things together. I've got people to sort the language out. We've researched the jargon. We have spent 15, 20 years publishing, working with professors, working in Japan, living in Japan to get the context, working alongside the shogunate, Sengoku Studies, Stephen Nojiri, to try and put the context there. And unbiased, I'm about as unbiased as it comes. I don't have any stake in what that Koryu did. I do not think Miyamoto Musashi fought with two swords very often. I think Miyamoto Musashi skills, and I'm going to do... You eventually I'm going to do it, guys, but just the house build is taking over at the minute. Miyamoto Musashi, if you actually read his work, it is not what you imagine. And I thought I was being super cool. I'm like, I've got a super cool secret. Miyamoto Musashi almost never fights with two swords. Went to Wikipedia. We have noticed Miyamoto Musashi almost never mentions two swords. And you're like, oh, sugar. I wasn't the only one to notice it. And I thought I'd got this. And I've been sitting on this for about seven or eight, ten years or something like that. And I've redone Miyamoto Musashi's five principles, which when I can hire a hall, I will do for you and show you. And um, so my point is I'm not biased in any way because I don't need to be. I want to know how Miyamoto Musashi really fought. I want to know how... Um, Ito Ryodan is done. So I know Nate's done Ito Ryodan, which I'll review next week against the translation. So one thing I didn't like about Nate was, was like, oh, you need qualified translators. Nate, there are no more qualified translations than the translation team I've got. Two heads are better than one. Many hands will make light work. Yep. I am a producer in all this. I And I do a lot of work, actually. A lot of it is putting the context together. They can translate it, but it's putting it all together. That, that's the difficult bit. And without doubt, we've got the language, we've got the jargon, we've got the context, and we've got the the non-bias um you know approach so i hope that helps um so beyond that um let's carry on i hope nate has a nice time and go and watch his um I'll, i will be doing a video about his ito ryodan so beyond that guys if you've stayed to the end of this video honestly book of bushido on audible now please many people ask me where do you, what's the best way to buy from you anthony which will give you the most profit and all that book of bushido audible i have a new deal on it and it's a good deal so get this. Go get yourself a copy now.